How much did you get picked on growing up? Well, I got, I got picked on a lot at school. Um, and every time I would come back to public school, it would be um, kind of a, an issue. It got to the point where, you know, I was having to basically know that I was gonna have a week or so of uh, wrestling matches and fist fights. And, um, and, and that affected you how? Well, I was willing to face it. And uh, uh, so I, I think that really shaped my personality. Now, in high school, I was around more. I was part of the establishment. I'd been on the basketball team. All right, so where are we? Well, this is John Burroughs High School in Burbank, and this, this sort of uh, represents probably the closest thing to normalcy that I really had in my, uh, in my growing years, because the Andy Griffith Show was over at this point. You wanna walk in? Sure, here we go. When you're here, what comes to mind? For me, so many lessons were learned, so many uh, ideas cemented, and so many really important steps, including, you know, I'm, I, met, <laughs> I met the woman of my life, yeah. uh, you know, here. Passing period, we'd go down here, and Cheryl and I would meet up for a little quick, a little smooching, a little, and <laughs> until a, until a, you know, a, a, a teacher or a counselor would sort of, hey, break it up, <laughs> get to class. Uh, well, right here, in fact, I can just tell you, Cheryl and I met in Miss McBride's English class. I was a very mediocre student all through elementary school. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around seventh, eighth grade, I sort of something clicked. I started to learn how to get grades, and I did um, much better. Um, then I had a counselor in the ninth grade who said, now that the Andy Griffith show is over, I think you should leave the business and concentrate on school. But I, I said, no, I can do both. And that was the one year I got straight A's, so I was trying to prove a point. And so in high school, I was pretty good. And, and I really did want to get into a university because Vietnam was a, a, you know, a real fear for uh, any males in my generation. Right. And I had that fear. Mr. Marshall, Thomas Marshall, tremendous um, educator, uh, taught history. He allowed me to make a film instead of doing a term paper. Uh, and I made my a documentary um, about the depression. And he liked it so much. I photographed you know, images from the depression. I interviewed seven different people who lived through the depression. I edited it together and kind of narrated my own version of this half hour film about the depression. And he let me take a, two days off get out of all my classes and show it to every history class. But from that point forward, I, I understood the power of narrative in history and what could be learned from it. And I know it's informed you know, my sensibilities as a storyteller. Yeah, this is the Brian Hurst Gymnasium. I, Brian Hurst was my coach. Uh, on the B basketball team. And he, was, he was also the athletic director. And, uh, but <laughs> it gives me a great feeling to come back in here because I was so proud to actually be on a team that got to play on this court. Uh, and, um, you know, and by my second year I was a starter and the co-captain and, you know, so it meant, it meant a lot to me. What do you remember from those days here? Um, well, I was never as good as I wanted to be. Um, and um, I never had any big games. Most of my good games were on the road. Okay. Where I think I was at a little, I had a little extra mat motivation because I'd be at the free throw line and it wasn't that unusual for the band to start playing the Andy Griffith theme song. They'd, so I'd be at the line and you know, they'd be going, da -dun -dun, da -dun 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 -dun, and then they'd yell, Miss it, Opie, and stuff like that while I was trying to shoot free throws. But it seemed to bring out something good in me. Uh, so tell me about the Howard Hurricanes. Howard Hurricanes. We never played here, of course, but we, I coached a team of my brother and his buddies that were kind of like the Bad News Bears. <laughs> And I loved it. I also knew I was doing it with an eye toward directing. And I, I remember thinking, well, if I can handle a bunch of 10-year-olds, uh, you know, maybe someday I can, I can handle a, uh, you know, a rambunctious movie star. And what was it about that that you felt prepared you for directing? Organizing, conveying, leading, 
uh, working with people, developing their talent. And I, and in a way, I, I try to bring out the best in people you know, as, a, as a filmmaker as well. I try to create an environment where they can really you know, apply their natural abilities in the most significant ways. A anything else that comes to mind being here? Well, you were asking about fights. I had a big fight here that I, I sort of was one of the instigators of it. It was against the, uh, our crosstown rivals, Burbank High School. And I knew it was one of my last games. And there was this one guy on the other team that I'd played with in junior high leagues. I'd never really, he always would kind of agitate me and he sort of took a swing at me. And I slugged him, um, didn't knock him down. But um, but I slugged him, and the fans just f stormed onto the floor, <laughs> and uh, um, I got thrown out of that game, of course, and uh, we lost. Did that teach you anything? Yeah, you know, uh, keep it in check. You know, I, that's I, that was stupid. I lost my mind. It, that was um, uh, testosterone gone amok. Here, I don't even really need my glasses. Let me do. Pressure's on now. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Took me a minute to warm up. <laughs>